at this time. Would you please stand to your feet and let's give our members of the Columbia City Council a warm welcome. Closest to the stage, we have the Honorable Daniel J. Rickerman, the Honorable Howard Duvall, the Honorable Tamika Isaac Devine, the Honorable Sam Davis, and the Honorable Edward McDowell. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Next up, I would like to introduce to some and present to, to others the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. Okay, well, we will hope that, well, here, here he is, the Honorable <laughs> Mayor David. If you would please remain standing. We will have the presentation of colors by the City of Columbia Combined Color Guard. Followed by that, we will have the singing of the national anthem by the High Seas of Columbia College. Thank you. 
At this time, we will have our invocation by Pastor Taylor Scheidel of Elevation Church. As to everyone, bow your head and close your eyes. God, we just want to thank you so much for allowing us to come together. And just thank you for your presence here, Lord. We know that you're here and present. And uh, Lord, I just want to pray for the night. Tonight we're going to get to hear vision for our city through Mayor Benjamin. I pray that you would speak clearly through him what you've put on his heart for our city. Because we're here together and we want to agree to make the city the best that it can be so that we're honoring you. So tonight, Lord, I just pray that there would be a unification in this room, that there would be including of all spirits, Lord, to join together so that we can just see you move in a powerful way in the city of Columbia. We thank you so much for this opportunity. I pray that tonight none of us would leave the same and we understand that we all play a part in seeing a difference in your city, Lord. We honor you. We praise your name. It's in your name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'd like to welcome Dr. Carol Moore, the president of Columbia College, to offer our welcome. Nice to see you. Good evening, everyone. Mayor Benjamin, City Council. Uh, it is my pleasure on behalf of the faculty, staff, our board of trustees, and our students to welcome you here to Columbia College. Uh, Columbia College, founded in 1854, has played a central role in this community and hopes to continue to do so. Uh, from the very beginning, our original location and then moving out to the North Main Street community, we are very proud of our association with this great city and with the North Main Street community. So whether it's your first visit or many times after, uh, I hope you know that you are welcome anytime on our campus here at Columbia College, uh, and I look forward to having uh, many of you back again. I also look forward to working with Mayor Benjamin uh, through the course of the coming years, and we are uh, sincerely appreciative of uh, the mayor's selection of Columbia College to present his state of the city. And in just a few moments, um, I will also welcome uh, the City of Columbia Poet Laureate, Dr. Ed Madden. Thank you all and enjoy the evening. As Ed approaches the podium, you all may be seated. I guess you figured that. <laughs> So this is my fourth state of the city as the laureate, city laureate, and I just want to say on this occasion that what an honor and a privilege it has been uh, to serve in this position. Uh, for this poem, I wanted to think about vision. I wanted to specifically juxtapose two kinds of vision, a civic vision and an artistic vision. And so I had in mind the 1905 document, uh, a study of Columbia that was called The Improvement of Columbia, South Carolina. And I also had in mind Blue Sky's landmark 1975 mural tunnel vision. And I wanted to think about the difference between the details of a vision and the way a vision itself is something different that guides us. Um, I also, before I want to read the poem, just give a quick thanks to John Shearer of Historic Columbia, who gave me the document so that I could read it. And also Ray McManus, um, who teaches at USC Sumter, another poet who's been an incredible collaborator. And he cut this thing in half, so it's a better poem because of him. Uh, it's called Window and Wall, and the epigraph is from the Harlan Kelsey Irving Guild 1905 study, The Improvement of Columbia, South Carolina, and the epigraph is Cities Have Awakened. It took nine, <clears throat> excuse me, it took nine months of work. Painting the wall, he carved out a tunnel, hung the sun in front of us. Nine white overhead lights lead us through the tunnel to the other side. We did not deem it desirable at this time, said Kelsey and Guild in 1905, to place too much emphasis upon detail, because in doing so, the main object sought might easily be lost sight of. The details of the mural trick the eye, the real stone merging with the fake, 
the real metal barriers beside the painted traffic signs. The things that seem to block the way are the things that make you see. The real windows on the wall look fake, become part of the painting. The vision of what's beyond is the point. Cities have awakened, wrote Kelsey and Guild, to the urgent need for a systematic plan for the future. In 1976, People magazine called the mural a brilliant orange sunset. The state newspaper later called it a descending sun. A comprehensive plan of development, said Kelsey and Guild, should consider well the tendencies of growth and the physical features that govern such growth. Two white arrows show both lanes going forward. No one is headed back. It's not clear, really, if the sun is rising or setting. My first few weeks in Columbia, a friend drove me over to see it early evening, the moment the tunnel seems most real, as if you could drive into it. The sun is the same size as the yellow traffic sign that warns of a right turn ahead, the road curving away and out of sight. Forty years ago, he warned us of a hard swerve to the right, something we couldn't yet see. It is quite possible, Kelsey and Guild admitted, that this report will be more useful in its suggestions than in the plan outlined. Blue Sky told People magazine, I wanted to reach through that wall and touch something larger than life. Rumor is a kid once drove into the mural. The South Carolina Encyclopedia reminds us that Kelsey and Gill's proposals were too ambitious to receive serious consideration, but they set a precedent for comprehensive planning. The things that block the way must be the things that help you see. The wall was a way out. The windows are dark. The sun is still shining in front of us. Thank you. As she makes her way to the stage, I would like to introduce to you our city manager, Teresa Wilson. Thank you, Erica. Good evening. Welcome to the 2018 State of the City Address. On behalf of Mayor Benjamin and all of Columbia City Council, I bring you greetings and thank every one of Columbia citizens for joining us. It's come, become somewhat of a tradition, so bear with me that the city manager recognize all special guests, and I don't want to leave anybody out, so I'm going to do my best. But we are so thankful for the presence, as I said, of all Columbia citizens, and would also like to acknowledge any members of the clergy that are here. Members of the clergy, please stand and be recognized. as well as any appointed administrators and of course all elected officials, and I do see many of them here in the audience, Richland County Council, Chairwoman Dickerson, and others, all elected officials, please stand and be recognized. I know we have representatives of our institutions of higher education other than Columbia College. If you are here, please stand and be recognized as well. If there are any state agency heads, please stand. We do have several members of the judiciary to include our municipal court judges. Please stand and be recognized. We thank them for being with us tonight. And of course, Judge Benjamin is here as well. At this time, I want to personally thank the families of Mayor Benjamin and all of our city council members, all family members of city council, Mayor Benjamin's family, please stand. I will also thank my own family in their absence. Because I work so closely with all of these council members, I do truly know the sacrifices that the families make. 
um, to serve our communities. We have to be away from our families on weekdays, weekends, and holidays. So we want to thank them for the sacrifices that they make to allow us to serve. Speaking of sacrifices, I wanted to share how I pers personally witnessed the willingness of our City of Columbia employees to give their all for our community. I am humbled and honored to work with them. They are some of the most caring, dedicated, and committed group of men and women that I've ever had the pleasure to know. And I would ask each of them to stand to include members of our executive management team on the front row. Please stand, all City of Columbia employees, and be recognized. I'm very proud of each one of them. I would ask them to remain standing for one second um, this year and in memory of him, I would ask that our employees continue to stand and we remember Mr. Arthur Strudwick, who was an assistant superintendent in the forestry and beautification division. Um, Arthur died in the line of duty this year, this past year, while working for our city during a storm and we do honor his memory and all employees who passed away in 2017. Thank you. 2017 was a year filled with some heartaches and challenges, but also much excitement as we launched Envision Columbia, our new vision statement. And all of you have, I hope, the planner. So we want you all to plan with us as we are going through our goals and objectives for our vision statement. Please take a look at that. It's a calendar as well. The City of Columbia's council and management team experienced a transitional period as we worked to launch a new vision and follow our focus areas and goals as we develop new programs and projects that will impact our community for generations to come. As we look ahead into 2018, we are prepared to work every day to make our vision a reality. Our strength comes from our citizens and our city leaders who are laser focused on the vision of making Columbia an even greater city. With that said, the time has come to introduce our mayor, the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. He is someone who is definitely focused on the strengths of our city and how those strengths bring us together as we envision Columbia. It is my pleasure and my honor to welcome Mayor Benjamin and wish him God's blessings from the employees of the city and he will come forward now to deliver the 2018 State of the City Address. Thank you. Watch those heels now. hot now? I am? All right. Okay. I can't really tell, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam City Manager. Um, I want to thank all the wonderful program participants we've had so far, uh, some beautiful music and, and prayer. Dr. Ed Madden never, ever ceases uh, to uh, amaze. I want to say good evening to all of you, uh, to all of my colleagues on, on City Council. I really like your hair, Tamika. Uh, Ed, your hairstyle never changes. I, I can't figure it out. <laughs> the, uh, to um, all of our neighborhood leaders and, and, and business leaders, our incredible team uh, here at the city of Columbia, all of my colleague elected officials assembled over here from uh, county council and school districts, um, uh, from the state legislature, thank you so much uh, for being here, uh, and to my mother and father, Sam and Maggie Benjamin, uh, who uh, have um, tolerated me and nurtured me for 48 years now. Uh, to uh, uh, You can clap for my parents, please. Feel, feel free. Uh, my incredible second pair of parents. It's not often you're blessed with uh, two uh, parents, but the, the Giss family, Mr. and Mrs. Giss, uh, who um, had me as a part of the family for uh, two decades now. I really like her. He's a whole different story. Uh, <laughs> but but he's, a, he's a cool dude, too. Uh, to my, my beautiful wife, my rock, uh, DeAndre, and to our beautiful, incredible uh, daughters, um, 
Bethany and, and Jordan Grace, who's waving at me right now. I see you, honey. Uh, uh, They are our hearts, our sun, our moon, our stars. They are uh, indeed the embodiment to us of all that is good and right and true uh, in this world. Uh, tonight I promise that I will be brief so you don't, uh, so you walk out looking like this uh, <laughs> instead of like, like this. So, um, uh, that the more I am the father of two beautiful daughters. Uh, and since the day they were born, uh, their mother and I have done everything uh, to, uh, in our power to engage them and to encourage them, to show them that uh, they live in a world in which all things are, are possible. We work to protect them uh, from the darkness and, and, and prepare them to protect themselves as well. Unfortunately, as parents, there's only but so much you can, you can do when we look at a nation where 60% of women can expect to be victims of sexual harassment uh, and many uh, victims of assault in their lifetimes. Uh, we have to make sure we make a statement that this is unacceptable. Uh, and as parents, there's again, only so much we can do. We can teach them to protect themselves and give them the self-confidence, self-awareness, and unquestioned support to stand up to would-be abusers and report those who would cross that line even when it's their boss and most importantly, we can make sure that they know that we love them absolutely, absolutely, every day, no matter what. Um, so just wanna be clear, on behalf of our entire team at the City of Columbia, our management at the City of Columbia, uh, whether it's in the workplace, on campus, whether it's at a bar or just on the street, um, certain behavior is always unacceptable. Uh, and we want you to know that um, every person here, we stand with you. Uh, and if you've ever been a victim of assault, we will always stand with you and fight with you against any and all oppression. Thank you, Dr. Moore, for inviting us and having us on campus here at Columbia College. Now, some of you may not know that uh, my friend Ben Rex and I uh, teach a class here uh, at Columbia College. Uh, and in preparation for the night, we asked our students uh, what they wanted to know about what they want the world to know about this incredible institution and what it means to be a fighting koala. Uh, uh, they told us, uh, we absolutely agree, that Columbia College is one of our city's best kept secrets, uh, that her graduates are change agents and that true to their Methodist roots, uh, they care passionately about social justice and that the Columbia College experience empowers them uh, to, cel uh, to celebrate the success of each and every individual. Perhaps most importantly, they told us that Columbia College teaches them to live in the how, how they can change things versus uh, the why, why things are the way they are. They're absolutely right. We couldn't be more thankful for this institution and for the unparalleled tradition of leadership and service instilled in every single one of our students. We look forward to be a part of your community as we continue to build this great partnership. So to every koala here tonight and across the world, allow me to say thank you uh, for bringing us here tonight and for all that you do, Columbia College. Thank you. Excuse me while I do a Marco Rubio. We are proud to stand here um, both to highlight Columbia College's success and to showcase its students, its faculty, and uh, incredible programming, but also to, to, to recognize the remarkable explosion of activity and growth that's happening here in North Columbia. From the $50 million uh, in investment in North Main and major improvements to Greenview Park and Hyatt Park on the way, Earlwood, Roy Lynch Park, uh, to the Busby Street Community Resource and Training Center, I'll let Ed and Sam decide if it's in District 1 or District 2. You guys figure that out. Um, and uh, to the incredible partnership that we're seeing between the community and public safety at Busby Street, uh, the landmark Azarest development at Heritage Creek, uh, reimagining 80 acres of undeveloped land with residential and retail hotels and a medical clinic, businesses and offices, uh, boutique shops and restaurants. This community is on the brink of a transformational 
year uh, when the state newspaper uh, calls North Main Corridor the city's up and coming hotspot and a hub for small local business. It's time to recognize that something special is happening here. Uh, but just like the rebirth of downtown, a student housing boom, and repeated years of budget surplus, this unprecedented, unprecedented North Columbia Renaissance hasn't happened by accident. Sam and, and Tamika, Daniel and the former life, um, it's the result of hard work, uh, a lot of planning, investment, uh, from streetscaping and park improvements to nearly $8 million in home improvement loans and a relentless recruitment effort, uh, of roughly $2 million in small business loans and grants in the North Main Corridor alone. This isn't happening by chance. It's happening by choice. We choose our seniors by completing the veranda uh, uh, senior living project and the Pinehurst project, um, Mr. McDowell, which will not only offer housing, but also give our seniors the opportunity to enjoy their golden years independent and in their own neighborhoods. We choose our young people uh, with South Carolina United's new soccer complex that will bring a wave of excitement in national tournaments and exciting growth uh, of, of both campus, uh, this campus, the, the Columbia International University, the Lutheran Theological Seminary with Lenore Rhine University. Uh, there are great things happening in this corridor. In North Columbia and all across the city, we choose sustainability. Uh, making investments of uh, more than $5 million in water and sewer improvements, either underway right now or being planned uh, between Earlwood and Booker Washington Heights to improve water quality, and millions more in stormwater improvements in Harlem Heights, Randall Avenue, and Wallace Street. We're choosing our neighborhoods by working together to ward off a threatening food desert off West Beltline Boulevard with not only a cooperative model grocery store, but also an urban farm and city park, making it one of the most unique co-op developments in the country. In fact, when we pull this off on Beltline, Mr. McDowell, it will be the very first food cooperative in the country that has been initiated by a governmental entity to help its citizens fight food insecurity with a targeted opening date of September 2019. This isn't happening by chance. It's happening by choice. We're making it happen together. <laughs> we choose not to pass our challenges off to the state or federal government, but to act and join together in cooperative growth, and by doing so, to thrive together. We're choosing a bold vision of infrastructure and innovation and inclusion. We're choosing to be a smart city. We're choosing to be a seamless city. The truth is that this is the age of America's cities. 85% of our citizens live in cities and metropolitan economies right now. 89% of all jobs are in cities and metropolitan economies. 91% of America's gross domestic product is produced in cities and metropolitan economies. Uh, the nation's 10 highest metropolitan areas generated $6.2 trillion in economic value in 2015 alone. That's greater than 37 states combined. What's more, our metropolitan areas have historically led the way in developing new technologies and adopting cutting edge strategies to help address issues from public health and sustainability to economic justice and justice reform. Time and again, America's cities have proven to be the beating heart of progressive chains and sustaining lamplight of a nation built on the promise of liberty and justice for all of her citizens. For all of our challenges and imperfections, America chooses cities to lead the way in infrastructure and in innovation and in inclusion. America chooses us, and we choose one another. But that choice is an expression of faith, and faith must be earned. Uh, this year at an event called the Longest Table, residents, elected officials, community leaders, business leaders, or community partners shared a meal, shared dinner, and discussed the soul of our city. 
It was an invaluable opportunity to come together for input and discussion. What struck me most about this gathering was its inclusivity, which meant not just diversity and in, in, in race and in, in gender or age and education and income or even expectation or expertise, but the wide variety of people we had come together, not as a patchwork, but each unique strand woven together as whole cloth that showed us that we were indeed a seamless city that shared the same values. This is not by accident, because we know that to truly become a smart city, Madam City Manager, as we've envisioned to do by 2036, our vision statement, we must first be a seamless city, interconnected, interdependent, unified at our most fundamental levels. When we talk about seamlessness, we're talking about creating an environment where improvements to one segment of our community benefit the entire city. For, for instance, we know that investing in a vibrant downtown is an expression of, of our values, a symbol of our commitment to the city as a whole, but the practical benefits are even more remarkable because growth in our city center, because it generates new revenues without the corresponding cost and more infrastructure and services, allows us to invest across the entire city. In other words, new private investment downtown is how we pay for new public investments in Hyatt Park. New small business incentives in North Main Street and Farrell Road, how we preserve historically valuable properties, how we pay for public safety initiatives citywide. What's more, the downtown explosion, the growing momentum on Bull Street makes private investment in 29203 that much more attractive. New retail comes because the neighborhood sees that a couple of hundred thousand people are coming to Spirit Communications Park. New restaurants open their doors because of that excitement. Deliberate progress born out of an interconnected and integrated strategy. That's the heart of what it means to grow smart, of smart growth. It's what it means to be a seamless city. And as we move forward, and our efforts become even smarter and more seamless, the momentum builds and every community benefits. The dominoes fall in our favor, not by chance, but by choice. But don't take my word for it. Let's just look back at the past year and let's see what we see. National Geographic travel name, Columbia, South Carolina, is one of the top 30 best small cities in the US. <laughs> Thrillist name, Columbia, one of eight under the radar American cities to visit before they're too popular. And, <laughs> and one of the great American cities where you can still buy a home uh, on a $50,000 a year salary. Uh, the city of Columbia, because of the great work of our staff and our Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, was named the Bicycle Friendly Community at the Bronze Level by the League of American Bicyclists. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. Columbia earned a B plus, which is, I think, better grades than Daniel and I got, we were at USC, uh, a, B, a B plus uh, in a survey by Thumbtack, measuring its small business friendliness. The Richland Library was awarded the National Medal for Museum and Library Service, one of 10 institutions nationwide. That might sound familiar because the Columbia Museum of Art won it the year before that. We have one of the few cities in the entire country to have two medal winners right here in the heart of our city. That award, please, that, that's worth an applause. The award, of course, is only given by the federal government to museums and libraries for the service to the community. Columbia earned a three-star rating in the Star Community Rating System. Robert and your team, Mary Pat and everyone, thank you so much for your incredible work. This is the Star Rating System for those of you who understand sustainability, understand the work uh, that we've all been focused on intently, certainly before then, but certainly since October of 20. 15 recognizes this is the nation's leading framework and certification program for local sustainability. Uh, this makes Columbia the only star-rated city in South Carolina. We're very proud 
of that work, and we're going to keep on, keep on, keeping on. Uh, Skip Holbrook and his team got Kalia certification. Uh, that requires incredible applause, y'all. Uh, give it up. <laughs> we, this police department has been leading the way in 21st century police and become a national leader and to have that independently uh, recognized by Kalia, uh, which is the gold standard, is a very big deal and we're so proud of that effort. The total solar eclipse, and I should put in parentheses, Howard Duvall's baby, uh, <laughs> was a major highlight. Howard, your work, working, helping, coordinating all the activities around that, representing the city, um, I believe had a direct um, impact on the success that South Carolina saw and that Columbia and the Midlands saw. We brought one million travelers to South Carolina to view the eclipse, leaving a $269 million economic impact on our state. <laughs> the Columbia region wel welcomed a record 14.7 million visitors in 2016, making tourism a $2.1 billion industry for this community. That's up from uh, up almost $200 million since 2014. We had 10 new businesses uh, come to Main Street this past year, making it a nearly a total of uh, 60 new businesses uh, since 2010, which does mean that we have more bars and restaurants and a CBD in the Vista than all of downtown Greenville. <laughs> yeah. And we, had, and we hadn't talked about five points yet, but I, has, hashtag, I'm just saying. It just, it just is. <laughs> Some things just are, okay? The Human Rights Campaign gave Columbia 75 on its Municipal Equality Index, uh, the highest uh, scorecard in the entire state, second highest in the Carolinas. We're very uh, proud of that recognition that we are a city for all people. And of course, uh, because of this incredible work by this starting five, uh, the University of South Carolina women's basketball team uh, won the national championship. We actually can't take, I think, I think Coach Staley might have a word about us taking credit for that one, uh, but we thought we'd mention it anyway because it is a very, very big deal. And hot off the presses, actually this evening, um, Expedia Travel just named Columbia as the best place to travel for the month of April 2018 in the entire country. Wow. Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> Due to all of, of the great events happening this month, so that month, so I uh, look forward to it. The applause for all these accomplishments goes to each and every one of you who work every day to make this city a special place. Without community partners, residents, and elected officials, we would not have seen uh, the 2017 that we saw. We would not be looking forward to the 2018 that we see before us right now. Even in the midst of these accolades and, and achievements, we, we never uh, can stop working. Collaborating with the Aspen Institute and Lend Up on Finance Forward, we hosted the very first ever national summit on income volatility. It's a term that most people have never heard about, have never thought about, but we've all lived through it. Uh, Ron King and others did fantastic work as we took a deep dive, deep dive examination on income volatility threatening so many of our families here in Columbia. The reality is that roughly a quarter of American families suffer a major disruption to their income every year. Nearly one of those five families suffers from an income drop of 50% or more. You think of the hourly worker whose hours are slashed and business slows down from one season to the next, a parent who gets hit with an unexpected hospital bill. Uh, a family, uh, most families in America cannot absorb an unexpected $400 bill. You think about the Uber driver who has a slow week. You think of all the independent contractors who have no sick leave, no health insurance, and no job security. From the sales employee who works on commission to factory workers, who get laid off during slow periods, income instability 
and volatility devastates too many families, including those um, who may be city employees. And that's why we're working uh, to implement a new workforce financial wellness program for city employees to strengthen our families by reducing the effects of income volatility. These workshops will be offered during paid work hours um, for selected departments will help our employees deal with the burdens of financial stress and adopt good financial behaviors while helping them through the home buying process as well, establishing measuring, measurable financial goals uh, with realistic plans to achieve them, building and maintaining an emergency fund or repairing and rebuilding credit. In addition, these workshops will educate our employees the unique benefits that are available to them as city employees, a fantastic mortgage loan program we have, and individual development accounts, bank on and tuition reimbursement programs. Over time, the expectation is that uh, this, this program will not only facilitate positive changes in our employees' lives and their families' lives, but, but maybe we'll be able to come up with a program, a uh, model program that can be replicated to help people in the private sector and maybe with our other public sector partners across this region. And as we continue to address income volatility, we're gonna continue the fight against food insecurity. This council unanimously passed a resolution establishing our first of its kind municipal food policy council. And so many of our members of the food policy council are here today. In addition to our West Beltline Food Cooperative, this diverse group of passionate policy advocates, farmers, business people, chefs, social workers, educators, uh, and more, they've identified issues they'll be able to strategically highlight and address. From decreasing food waste by collecting food to donate to local nonprofit organizations to hosting listening sessions in areas throughout our city, the Food Policy Council will stand in the gap for people in Columbia to bring forth and implement solutions that will drastically to change the way in which we address all things food related, making sure that we address the very basic needs of humanity as a city together. We reintroduced our City Serve initiative in October, which provided more than 2,000 volunteer opportunities for a few dozen projects benefiting local nonprofits and neighborhoods and government entities around the region. With several partners, we hosted our first day festival at the Firefly Stadium, providing backpacks full of free school supplies, games. Uh, the CPD broke out their ice cream truck. Who knew they had an ice cream truck? Um, health screenings and free haircuts to our K through 12 children, which we hope uh, took a little bit of stress off of the parents of more than 1,500 students that we were able to serve together. Uh, we've committed as a city to a pledge of 100% clean and renewable energy by 2030. Six, I want to thank Councilman Rickman for taking on this challenge and leading the way and helping us get there. Uh, we're going to continue to promote alternative energies for our citizens and, and open up. Uh, we opened up this year a new uh, uh, fantastic LEED Goal certified building on West Beltline Boulevard. Mr. McDowell, the largest green roof in Columbia uh, on Beltline. Boulevard with our new wastewater facility. A fantastic um, achievement. We're so proud of our team and staff on delivering on. And on top, on top of all that, we stood up when other states and the federal government refused to act and unanimously passed an ordinance banning the use of bump stocks and trigger cranks in the city of Columbia. Thankful for these accomplishments and thankful for the leadership of our city team, our council, city manager, and incredible city staff. Um, but while we celebrate, we have to recognize that these aren't simply singular steps forward, but stitches in our seamless city interconnected into a whole greater than sum of its parts. So now we can go on to what's next. Um, we We have incredible opportunities before us. <laughs> I 
I can't sing, I can't dance. <laughs> so we're just going to rock and roll and keep on moving. Um, we have incredible opportunities before us, and the state of our city is indeed strong. The, um, keep moving. Some of you may notice that um, I'm a little bit less of a man than I was last year. <laughs> and I mean that, I mean that literally, literally. <laughs> uh, leveraging a better diet, more physical activity, and downright old school positive peer pressure on social media, weighing in at city council meetings while being harassed by Mr. Rickman and Mr. Duval as I took off more and more garments just trying to make way in. Uh, I'm indeed 25 pounds lighter than I was when I stood on the stage last year. <laughs> now, hashtag mayor weighs in needs to become hashtag Columbia weighs in. Uh, with several of our city's healthcare partners, we will issue a challenge to the citizens of Richland County, Lexington County, Columbia, and anyone within the sound of my voice to lose 25,000 pounds between March 1st and June 1st. March 1st and Memorial Day weekend. Together, we can do this. If we do it, and we decide that we can maintain it. These aren't, this isn't a, uh, a New Year's Eve resolution. This is not a long-term commitment. This is all of us working together to achieve the benefits of weight loss. If we can keep it up, then over the course of one year, we can lose 100,000 pounds in this city. Who's in it with me? All right. All right. And if you're in, the more people you recruit means the less weight you have to lose. <laughs> All right? So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna encourage some serious participation. As we uh, aim to lead healthier lives, we're going to continue to build on this incredible cycling infrastructure, this multimodal environment that people like Joyce Dickerson and our friends at the county have pushed for the last several years. Incredible work being done by the Richland Penny. We're gonna to work to connect in a seamless way all the great work being done by Richland County, so many of our nonprofit partners, our wonderful staff at the City of Columbia, and the BPAC. This, this map might look like a bowl of spaghetti to some of you. Uh, shows existing, under construction or design, City projects, penny projects, projects being done by some of our nonprofit partners, and the vision to connect all of them with our existing infrastructure. Bike boulevards, bike lanes, shared lanes, sharrows, greenways, connecting a, an additional 30 miles for cyclists throughout the city. This year, our city will commit to funding this, this connectivity to make it a reality for the people of the Midlands. We also commit to bringing, and you will not see a, a, a chart for this, I'll just say it, uh, we also commit to bringing exciting new life and a bold new plan for Finley Park, creating a local, a regional, and a national draw in the heart of downtown. Columbia. Keep your, keep your eyes open. All right. Now imagine if we took on the challenge of affordable housing, recognizing that all of our economic growth and cultural richness won't matter in a city if there's no place affordable for people to live. I believe we can rise to that challenge, and that's why we've committed to championing a new policy that incentivizes builders to produce vibrant, mixed-use, mixed-income housing in our city. We'll also commit to leveraging the new tax revenue generated from student housing to create housing for hard-working, tax-paying families in Columbia. 
and also for those who have no place at all to call home. Sixty seconds. Do you realize how uncomfortable it is <laughs> to have silence for sixty seconds straight? That was intentional. To underscore the importance of meeting the needs of our unsheltered citizens in Colombia. Imagine that 60 seconds, 86,400 times a day. 86,400 times a day, having no home to go to, having no place to seek shelter from the rain or the snow or the heat in our famously hot summers. We've got work to do to make sure that we indeed are a city for all people. It's our job, it's our responsibility to bring opportunities to underserved communities and people that lift them up and focus specific strategies on helping make this housing market work for all people, that works for everyone so that everyone has their own definition of a home. I believe that we can leverage strong public, private, and philanthropic partnerships to help enhance quality of life for people all across this city, more aptly engage our citizens Simply put, we can become a very smart city. Obviously, public safety is one of the great opportunities for us. Our CPD is well positioned. And I will tell you that there incre there's incredible work going on all across our city. And we're thankful to, to you know, Terrence, to you and Clint, and Teresa, and the focus that we've been putting on, on the power of using data and leveraging it to make sure that we make this entire citizen experience that much more special. I want to talk about two departments in particular, however, that shows you just what it means to be a smart city. Our Columbia Police Department is well positioned to tout active and soon to come technologies. Uh, currently, the CPD has an online, has online reporting which allows citizens to submit and print reports for things like lost property, nuisance animals, and, and trespassing. They also host an open public data portal in compliance with the White House uh, initiative for 21st century policing that provides police data statistics for assaults on officers, solvability factors, arrests, and, and field interviews. An online crime map is already there that gives public access to historical and current crime data, both locally and nationally. Users have access, the ability to set, up, to set up crime alerts and be automatically notified when there's criminal activity in a designated area. Our police department has and will continue to appropriately address situations that arise in relation to this incredible opioid epidemic. Uh, we have the tools, we have the training, we've gotta make sure we have more coordinated resources. The sad reality is that in 2016, 550 deaths uh, occurred in South Carolina with prescription opioids uh, listed on the death certificate up 
from 2015. A smarter city makes sure we have the resources in place to deal with this growing national epidemic, and we will be prepared. And I saw the Waste Department, a wonderful online program called Recollect, was introduced in 2015 and has since allowed Columbia residents to sign up for a reminder for waste collection, uh, even including a search tool that allows residents to, to search a material they're disposing of to find the proper disposal method, whether it's recycling, garbage, yard trash, or other. There's an interactive game where children and adults uh, can learn what materials go where. We can expand that effort with a mobile application, a web portal that interfaces directly with the city's computerized maintenance management system known as CityWorks through apps. Citizens will be able to report concerns, upload supporting information like pictures, and communicate effectively with our customer care team. Soon to come is a citizen self-service portal, which will provide a publicly accessible web portal that allows users to apply for and view permit and plan applications, upload required documents, view and pay invoices, and perform various record searches without troubling people or even having to vis visit physically a city office or standing in line. So, on the way, a smart city. As you can see, um, we've already taken a number of steps, but we look forward to what's to come in anticipation of changes in culture and technology and, and infrastructure. Smart cities uh, with 5G on the way in 2020, we'll see the introduction of, of more fiber and broadband delivering 5G wireless uh, technology. In 2018, this city will commit to at least one deal, at least one that will deliver 21st century fiber and a small cell network that will allow us to take advantage of 5, 5G. We're talking about 10 to 100 times more antenna locations than 4G or 3G. Small cells about the size of a shoebox that would be dispersed throughout the city will deliver more speed and support more capacity, not just for your cell phones or for your tablets, but also for new technology to be introduced by our city, our, our, our county, and other public partners and private companies. When you think about 5G, I don't want you to limit yourself to think about better internet speeds when we're eating or drinking at our favorite coffee shop. Uh, 5G will have an fundamental, incredible economic impact on investment, job creation, and GDP growth, technological innovation in this city. Imagine if public lighting would dim automatically when no pedestrians or vehicles are present, what that means in terms of environmental, ecological, and financial benefits. Imagine having smart metering systems uh, that provided real-time information about where empty parking spaces are in the city. They actually do have empty parking spaces in downtown. <laughs> Imagine if our police officers were deployed immediately when a firearm is discharged, allowing them to respond to a specific location to survey the situation immediately. Imagine, yes, imagine driverless cars. Driverless cars. I can't wait to see my wife be the backseat driver in a driverless car. <laughs> She's pretty impressive as a backseat driver. This is the beginning of a technological revolution in Colombia, and we're going to lead the way. In order to take advantage of this revolution, our children must be prepared for a 21st century economy. Working with this council, with our friends at Richland County Council, and Richland School District 1, we want to make a promise to every single child in our public schools that we'll call Columbia's promise, or we'll call Richland promise, or this the promise, that if they do what we know that they can, that they'll get good grades, behave well, and graduate high school. And upon graduation, we'll pay for their college. Yeah. 
we can rise to the challenge of higher education, helping ease the staggering costs of a new program model after the Kalamazoo Promise, which has provided more than $67 million in college tuition for more than 4,000 Kalamazoo public school students since 2005. They've done it in Kalamazoo, Seattle, Denver, Pittsburgh, even in the state of Tennessee, and we can do it right here in Columbia, South Carolina, by working together. I know our council values education. I think Richmond County Council may have more educators per capita than any, <laughs> any uh, public body in the entire country. And I look forward to working, Madam Chair, with uh, which Richmond School District One, you and the superintendent, and your uh, board of commissioners in making this a reality. You will continue to see true commitment. That was, that was the chair of the school board leading those applause. I, li I like that. I like that. You will see a true commitment to regional partnership, stressing that we're all stronger when we work together. We're healthier when we work together. We have work to get done. We've got to reestablish a unified fire service contract. Yeah. Okay. We have a fantastic command staff and men and women who are working our fire service, and we want to make sure that every citizen in Richland County and Columbia benefits from the leadership of our joint effort. We will continue to work together with our fantastic arts community. I was excited yesterday to announce the, the, uh, the beginning of Amplify uh, as we work together to develop a regional cultural plan for this region. Look forward to One Columbia and all of our partners' leadership in making that happen, directing the path as we move forward. We, we saw what, 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 what's happened because of the leadership in 1905. Let's see what we can do in 2018. We're excited this year, very soon, to cut the ribbon on Stormwater Studios, a new home for artists in downtown Columbia. Together, we're going to work to expand our convention center. Uh, to get 100,000 square feet of exhibit space at the Metropolitan Convention Center. And I'm thankful to the leadership of, of the Midlands Business Leadership Group and Ingenuity and others for taking on the challenge of making sure we develop our riverfront to its highest potential. Thank you for that leadership. But working together, we will be a city for all people. We're going to be a city for all people. We often talk about the creative class, and we talk about millennials, and we're going to talk just a, very briefly about what we've come to call the experience class, all right? Uh, in collaboration with AARP, we're going to host our very first senior summit in Columbia this year. <laughs> I'm going to provide resources and facilitate conversations that helps us focus on what's, what's necessary for an aging population. The reality is, and I'm sorry to bust the bubble of some of my millennial friends, but please note that by 2042 will be the very first year that Generation Xers, millennials, and baby boomers will all be eligible for Social Security benefits. <laughs> If it's still there, how about that? <laughs> so these types of conversations are really not as far off as we think they are. All right, now a tough one. Now, uh, when I, I know when I start talking about the railroads, this emoji pops in your head. <laughs> we have had an incredible challenge over the last several years with great strength of the Port of Charleston, helping feed economic activity throughout this state and up and down the East Coast. Uh, phenomenal growth of the inland port in Greer. We're right in the middle of all of it. Railroads in America are going through a great renaissance. And we are in the middle of a, of a statewide challenge that requires a statewide solution. Our due diligence and our engagements with CSX and Norfolk Southern shows us that rail traffic is up 
800%, guys. 800%. Some of the trains that used to come through downtown Columbia were a half mile long, and now two and a half miles long. It's a real challenge that comes with economic prosperity, but yet it's still something that we must work to deal with together. So we're going to re-engage this month with the State Infrastructure Bank. We're going to re-engage with South Carolina DOT. We're going to appeal to the U.S. Department of Transportation to try and resolve this issue once and for all. I'll be asking our council and our staff to explore the possibility of a voter-authorized referendum uh, to raise the funds for our local match to end train traffic disruption on Assembly Street and potentially other corridors once and for all. Uh, we understand that these changes in our city uh, call for changes um, in the way in which things that uh, way things have always been done, and we're willing, ready, willing, and able to accept that challenge. As many of you know, later this spring, I'll have the honor of serving as president uh, as the U.S. Conference of Mayors, representing Columbia on our national stage. I will tell you that while I'm excited to serve in this role, I'm even more excited about the possibilities that we will have just to show off Columbia to the rest of the world. To show people. Not that we have to prove ourselves to anyone. We know who we are. We know what we can do. But we'll be able to show the world that um, we're not Dallas, we're not Los Angeles or Atlanta or Kalamazoo. Uh, but we are uniquely and proudly Columbia. We're going to focus intently on innovation, on infrastructure and inclusion. We're going to focus on showing people the very best that we are. Our desire will be to engage and encourage mayors from all across the country. We will have nearly 80 of them in Columbia this fall and highlight in those three areas ways in which we can work together to push for strategic change all across this country. We're going to show Columbia, show the world how incredible Columbia is. I want to make one final point um, as we try to address this climate in which we find ourselves in over the last year or so. And I don't mean climate as in global warming, although we are doing a great job addressing that as a community. Uh, with so many people throwing jabs in the environment in which public discourse has now found itself downright toxic at times, there must be an intentional group of people willing to absorb those blows and transform what was meant to divide into what will bear good fruit for the people who need us. We're the leaders in this community, each and every one of you in this room. That good fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control will manifest the shift in culture and subsequently what we permit to take place in our beloved cities and state and nation. We must be very mindful that there's a very real attack on our families, on our neighborhoods, and our valued cultured, cultural institutions. Only when we operate from a place of understanding, a place of inclusion in which we value all ideas, all opinions, all people, we'll be able to develop, I believe, the proper perspective and be able to discern what things are truly good and respond accordingly. It has been a blessing for the last seven plus years to serve as mayor of this great city. I don't take it lightly that I've been given this opportunity by each and every one of you. Um, but I will tell you the most moving part of what I have experienced over these last several years uh, has been the love. The love I've received meeting and working with the people 
of the City of Columbia. With our colleagues on council, I will tell you with no, um, without hesitation, that this is the finest council we've ever worked with. I, I respect each of them, and I thank you for your friendship and for your service as colleagues and your service to the people of Columbia. A fantastic staff, Madam City Manager. Your team is rocking and rolling. Each of you are doing such great work. I look forward to continuing to work with you. This incredible community that I would put up against any city all across this world. And I will say as I close, thank you to my village, to my rock, to my heart and soul, to the people whose shoulders that we stand on very boldly. No matter how times change, we know that the glue that will hold us together without fail will always be love. A seamless love that does not divide based on ideology or any other identifying factors but cares for one part the same as another. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a time where all things are possible. From the North Columbia Renaissance to the incredible things happening here on the campus of Columbia College, citywide wireless infrastructure, affordable housing, affordable higher education, from abolishing hunger to fighting sexual assault. The promise and possibility is right here before us. All we need to do is take hold. All we need to do is choose. We must choose each other. We have to choose a smart city, a seamless city, a city of infrastructure, innovation, and inclusion. We have to choose one Columbia, one Columbia that loves each other. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God bless the great city of Columbia. Thank you. Having heard what you've heard in the mayor's annual State of the City address, as you leave here tonight, I just encourage you to rethink how you envision Columbia. At this time, I would like to introduce the Reverend Aaron Bishop. He will offer our invocation. I'm sorry, our benediction. Thank you. Let us pause for the moment of prayer before I uh, administer the benediction. I want to thank the city council and the mayor for their leadership. Can we give them another round of applause? <laughs> Let us pray. Father, God, our creator and our sustainer, we pause to say thank you tonight because a community that prays together shall stay together. We thank you, Lord, that the handshake between the courthouse the schoolhouse and the church house is evident in the microcosm of this unity of this community tonight. Now, Lord, we thank you for the courageous leadership of our mayor and our city council, that the infrastructure and innovative ideas and inclusion will even go down to the least of these. Now, as we part from this place, never let us part from your presence, but let your authority and sovereignty govern over our mind, our heart, so that we won't be just, we are Columbia, but we are one Columbia. It's in your son's name that we pray, amen.